y'all, it's Amanda at Fig and Thistle Books. I'm here with a very brief wrap up of January. Brief because I didn't read much. And basically I'm going to give to you all my TBR for February. So wrapping up very briefly, I'm saying that I read three books in January. But if you look at how it all shakes out, I actually completed one entire book in February. Let me explain. So I, my first completed read of January was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, um, which is part of my leisurely kind of Harry Potter reread I've been doing. And um, I started it in December and I finished it up in January. So, but I'm counting it as a 2018 read. Um, I read The Changeling. That's the book that I started in January and completed in January. And that was for Russell A. Income Paper Blogs, Around the World in a Thousand Pages. Um, and then I read Kava Akbar's Calling a Wolf a Wolf Poetry Collection. That video is going up this week, I swear to you. Um, you'll understand why I didn't film it earlier here in a minute. And I technically finished that in the early morning hours of February 1st. But I'm counting that as a January read because I was mostly done with it. And we're not going to count the, I was up till 12.30 finishing it. So, three books. And my goal is to read 60 God, Amanda, are you depressed that like your reading years started off with like not reading a lot of books? Why no? No, I'm not. I am counting January as a victory reading month. So why? Why is that? Well, I am back to loving reading. I am back to being able to read in a sustained manner. I'm back to picking up the books that are actually on my TBR and not choosing to do something else. I have had no issues at all cutting off my phone at night and putting social media down and reading. Um, I have read every single day, even if it's I can only read one poem or one paragraph or I just snuck in 10 minutes at the tail end of a lunch break. I have read every single day and that's big for me. Also, January was nutty. So what happened in January? I moved house. Um, and with only like a week and a half heads up. So I moved house. I had a major, major family crisis issue that took the bulk of my emotional energy of January. Uh, at work, it's the beginning of the semester and at the university library, that's always a very busy time um, for what I do and what my job description entails. So I was busy at work. I started back to graduate school um, I'm taking research methods, which has kind of, it's intense. Um, so I've been doing homework. Uh, I had strep throat, so I was down for about three days. And last week, littlest daughter had the flu, flu type A. So that was um, almost a whole week of her being home and my husband and I juggling like childcare schedules and who's going to stay home or whatever. In addition, we had several snow days which would seem like, oh, great time to read. No, my little kids were home, and whenever our schedule is disrupted, it just it throws my reading for a loop. So we were playing board games and napping and watching movies and doing a little bit of reading, but not a ton because it was a snow day. And um, by day three, they were pretty stir crazy. So all of that, and I still read every single day. And I finished three books. And y'all, last year there were times where I did not finish a book all month. So I am feeling really positive about going into February. Um, there, you know, I feel like things are kind of coming together. Um, I've got a plan. I'm excited about what I'm reading. So I think we're going to see my reading numbers jump in February as long as like <laughs> no other major life crisis type things occur and nobody gets sick. Please. <laughs> Please. Okay, so I'm going to be positive. Uh, so let me talk to you real quick about my physical TBR. Um, all of these books I've picked to coincide with February, which is a initiative hosted by Lauren at Lauren in the Books to read uh, books by and about women. Um, through the month of February. So that's what's inspired my um, my reading for this month. So let's go through the list. All right, first up is Angela Carter's The Magic Toy Shop. I 
am, let's see here, I have about 50 pages into this reread. It is freaking gorgeous. I've already decided um, when I review this, and I'm going to review it, um, there's about a page and a half that I want to read, and I don't like reading books um, on film. Like, I feel like I can't do it justice, but I just, I have to. This is so gorgeous. So, um, that, and this is also for my um, Virago challenge. Um, I picked a short story collection to dip into, and I'm going with Helen Oyemi's What is Not Yours is Not Yours. Once again, like with the Magic Toy Shop, reading the Changely, just really, I want some magical realism. I love Helen Oyemi, so I'm excited to dip into this. Next, we have the Fig and Thistle Books Poetry Challenge February Selection. Hello, that's your announcement. Nicole Seeley's Ordinary Beast. Um... I'm, I'm very excited about this collection. I had a friend who picked this up for me at the American Library Association conference. Um, so we will be uh, reading that and discussing it. Next, for my um, TBR challenge that Adam Roofbean Reader is hosting, we have a Barbara Commons Who Was Changed and Who Was Dead. This is for one of my favorite little independent presses, uh, The Dorothy Project. Um, and I'm looking forward. This is this looks like it's going to be weird and wonky, and I'm, I'm excited for that. A nonfiction choice, which I talked about in my readerly rambles, is The Feminist Reverence Desk by Maria Cardi. And uh, this is going to be my lunchtime read I'm going to dip into. Um, and I, I think it's going to be really good. You know, I just, I see social justice and feminism is completely being intertwined with my concept of librarianship. So I'm excited to start reading this. Next, we have a new book that I ordered in hardback with a 20% off Barnes & Noble coupon. I don't usually buy hardbacks. I usually wait for the trade paperback to come out. Um, but I was really excited for this. And y'all, that cover though. So this is uh, Lenny Zuma's The Red Clocks. Red Clocks, there's no the. And uh, it's about five women and in this kind of dystopia where uh, reproductive rights are heavily controlled. Um, on the back, it is blurbed by Maggie Nelson. And I adore everything that Maggie Nelson does. I want to be Maggie Nelson when I grow up. So um, I'm, I'm really excited to read this one. And lastly, on my physical TBR, we have Weathering Heights. This will be my third, third, maybe fourth, I think it's third, read of Emily Bronte's Weathering Heights. And I'm reading this for uh, Lucy the Reader is hosting a Bronte 200 celebration with the Parsonage. Um, and so they're reading a book every two months, and I just found out about it, and um, I am excited to reread this book. Um, it is one of my favorites, and um, I haven't visited it in quite a while. In fact, there's sometimes when you read books that you just really, you can imagine, you know, you have a memory attached to it. So when I was pregnant with Atticus, I was about... Um, eight weeks along and I almost miscarried and I was on bed rest for several days as, so we could make sure everything was okay and Sam had to work and I was just on a couch bored and I just decided I was going to reread Wuthering Heights and so I did I read Wuthering Heights and uh well, it was a reread for me and I hadn't visited it since college and so I was, I was glad to get to it so that's been a solid you know seven or eight years since yeah, eight years, because it was 2010. It was a, uh, it was March of 2010. So yeah, it's almost exactly eight years. So I'm excited to read this again. Next, I have two books on my TBR that are ebooks, and I am not a fan of ebooks. I read on my Kindle when I was nursing my babies. Um, both Atticus and Percy were nearly 10 pounds at their birth, and quite, quite chunky cuddly babies and it was very hard to like prop a physical book and try try to nurse them so I read on my Kindle quite a bit um and I just don't like ebooks um I feel like it's I do a lot of my work is online graduate school is online I do a lot of social media and stuff I'm online all the time when I read I want the tactile physical book smelling um 
actual books. However, we have this interesting <laughs> ritual we've started with our kids to get them in bed. So I'm going to tangent here and explain to you why we do this because I have mom guilt about it. So um, basically up until we moved in January, we were living in kind of a rough neighborhood. Um, there is a housing crisis where I live where there's not a lot of affordable housing. Um, so we were stuck where we were at. We couldn't afford a nicer place. Um, and with having three kids, we were kind of, we couldn't find three bedroom apartments or housing in our in our price range so we were kind of stuck where we were at and there uh, when we moved in it was nice and then management changed property owners changed and about six months after we moved we noticed um, there were issues with domestic violence selling drugs loud music uh, people fighting it was it was scary I didn't like Sam to leave or work at night while we lived there um, we lived in an apartment complex for a couple of years in that area and then the apartment the complex it was made up of half town homes and half apartments we moved to a town home thinking okay a town home's open we'll move there it should be quieter it was not we had uh, neighbors who would scream at each other every night we don't quite know what was going on with that situation um it was unsettling so when we moved Atticus was four and Percy was not quite two. So we had small kids and the teenager, she, she was cool. She was cool. We, she goes to bed fine. Um, but um, we had a hard time getting them in bed because they had been used to quiet and then there would be like these unsettling yelling and doors slamming and cars racing and then I was stressed and freaked out. So we started this thing where we watch one, we get them all ready for bed and in their jammies and then we curl up with them in the living room and we get cuddles and we watch uh, an episode of Reading Rainbow. They're streaming on Amazon Prime. So we watch an episode of Reading Rainbow and then if they're almost asleep but not quite, we turn on a YouTube playlist of classical music or like ocean sounds and we wait till they're good and asleep and then we put them in their bed and then we have like a box fan going year long <laughs> to, to try an air purifier to try to drown out the chaos we were living in. So my kids have gotten used. They're seven and five now and we are now living in a adorable home that is quiet and peaceful. We have no neighbor issues. There's a tiny little dog that yaps sometimes and that's it. It is like utterly silent. It's blissful. But now my kids are used to this evening ritual. All that to say, for years, years now, I have spent that 30 minutes to an hour um, playing Candy Crush, uh, looking at dresses on mod cloth, catching up on Twitter, reading the news, Facebook, like, 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 Instagram. I have the Kindle app on my phone. Why am I not reading? Duh. So I'm giving up this whole time where I could be reading in a sustained manner and I'm not. So I'm going to. Um, so the two book ebooks I have that I went to finish in February is um, Tar Baby by Toni Morrison. And that's for Dee Dee at Brown Girl Reading is hosting a uh, Read Soul Lit month for the month of February. And Tar Baby is the read along choice. And I haven't read any Toni Morrison since college and I love Toni Morrison. I've read Beloved and The Bluest Eye and Song of Solomon and Paradise and Jazz. Um, I, I love her writing and I was like, why have I not picked up any Toni Morrison in a while? So I will be reading Tar Baby and then I'm also going to work on my Harry Potter reread and read um, Order of the Phoenix is up next. So I'm going to reread that on my Kindle. So I'm going to be making better use of my time in the evening. And then eventually we are working on, um, you know, I do enjoy my cuddles, but we are working on getting them to get themselves in bed at night. It's a work in progress. <laughs> so that is my um, February TBR with a long uh, <laughs> parenting um, tangent thrown in there. Um, let me know what you are reading in February. I will link Lauren in the Books February video. Um, Lucy the Reader's uh, Bronte 200 announcement and uh, Brown Girl Reading, Reading's Tar Baby announcement 
down below so you can check that out if you'd like to join along. Um, and uh, that's it for me. And uh, I will talk to you all later. All right. Bye.